Well, there's steam coming from the car and the team say they're ready within a few minutes to attempt a new steam land speed record. No one's achieved this for over a century, but we're about to find out if this team of British engineers have got what it takes. There's nothing new in steam engineering. In fact, at the dawn of motoring, it was as serious a contender as the internal combustion engine. In the heyday of steam, the steam cars were far more practical and faster than um, the uh, internal combustion, the gasoline engines and the diesel engines. In fact, the, um, the Stanley Brothers car uh, back in 1906 was the fastest vehicle on the planet. On a dark desert highway, cool wind in my hair. An upturned canoe on a conventional steam car chassis. The result, the sort of aerodynamics never seen before. The Stanley steamer, driven by Fred Marriott, set a world record of 127 miles per hour. Welcome to the Hotel California. Which is where Charles Burnett III comes in. In honor of you guys, I'm wearing the NASA helmet today. A multi-millionaire eccentric with the cash to make an engineering steam dream a record-breaking reality. It seems to me that uh, we ought to be able to uh, have two world records, actually. Um, first one being for the overall, obviously, steam land speed record, and the other one being for having broken the oldest standing automotive ro record in the world. It all started 10 years ago on Charles's English estate. A team of British engineers given free reign to tinker in a shed to create a car which would reach new record-breaking speeds. And alongside Charles, a test driver with pedigree, grandson of Sir Malcolm Campbell and nephew of the ill-fated Donald Campbell. If I wasn't a Campbell, then, then I wouldn't be doing it, for sure. Um, following in the footsteps, they're, they're very big footsteps to follow in, and um, there's no way that I'm trying to uh, emulate the achievements of, of Sir Malcolm or, or Donald. Uh, but if I can add one world record to that long list that they've established, then uh, I'll, I'll be happy with that, yes. Thorny Island, Portsmouth. The pressure's rising in the steam team, with project manager Matt Candy hoping the car will deliver the perfect test run for the waiting press. It's a great day for a run. Yeah, we've got, the, we've got some sun. Uh, at the moment, the uh, wind is down. Um, we won't want to run in anything more than 15 miles an hour, but it's low wind at the moment. The pin stuck. If in doubt, fix it with a hammer. It is uh, a quintessentially eccentric project. Uh, it, it's barking mad when you look at it, really. Why would anybody want to get a, a kettle, for all intents and purposes, to do 170 miles an hour? Barking mad, maybe, but from his Hampshire hideaway, the perfect project for a tycoon with a passion for engineering exploration. I think it's, it's very important that, 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 that people's imaginations be allowed to roam freely because unfortunately the trend in science these days is you don't get funding unless your peers say it's a worthwhile project, etc., etc. But many of the, uh, of the great discoveries in science, as we know, have been made um, purely by accident or by somebody investigating something that's, uh, that's totally unrelated to their field. Not so concerned by the car's future potential, the world's media just wants to see either a successful run or a great British failure. And with Don Wales test driving today, some legendary Campbell magic. My grandfather always had a St Christopher on his cars and this one was given to my grandfather by my mother. And it's uh, inscribed at the back, to daddy, from Jean. And um, I'm not sure which bluebird this went on, but it, it was certainly on a bluebird. Um, and I carry it around with me in my pocket for good luck as well. With Don behind the wheel, the car fires up, then fails to move an inch. One of its 12 specially designed micro boilers has blown. The team's left devastated. Uh, frustrating. Annoying. Yeah. No, it's very frustrating. Yeah. Camera shy car. <laughs> that is the day summed up in one word. It's very, very disappointing. It's almost as though that car is camera shy. It's, it's also, it's, it's the wrong colour, you see. It shouldn't be green. My uncle was adamant that anything green was removed from his car or his boat. So, uh, you're very, very superstitious about the colour green. No, it's British racing green. It can't be the wrong colour. It's not going to be blue. <laughs> 
Mr. Wells, that car is not going to be blue. You've been telling tales. <laughs> the car's taken back to the workshop, but the cameras are still rolling on project manager Matt. It's the thing you don't want to do is do your testing in public, but because of the resources of the team and the limited time, we've got all of this interest and you either don't service it or, or you disappoint lots of people. So we've disappointed lots of people. But fixing faults and tweaking new technology is what this team thrives on. Small, portable, compact steam power hasn't been done for a long, long time. Steam makes 80% of the world's electricity. Large steam turbines are very, very commonplace. But putting that on wheels and uh, getting it up to uh, record-breaking power is the challenge. Back in the shed with the car up on bricks, I get a peek under the bonnet. We actually use uh, kettle elements from a genuine kettle to heat the water, to heat the gas, to turn or turn it seems the heat appropriate when it's steam. It I just seemed think, yeah. uh, uh, the right thing to do. So we start uh, with uh, with some uh, equipment from caravans and a kettle. <laughs> yes, it has a, 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 an essence of eBay about it, but uh, we, 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 we try to maintain a certain professionalism. Water boils at 100 degrees centigrade. Fact. Well, at least that's what I thought. Our clever engineers are breaking all the rules by putting their steam under immense amounts of pressure, thus superheating it to over 400 degrees centigrade. If you're a health and safety officer, look away now. There's lots of safety things, but in a, in a, in a worse case scenario, you've got, there's a lot of energy stored on board. So from a health and safety point of view, you're far enough away here, but if, if something goes wrong, then you just go away and we'll sort ourselves out. Was that full pack? That was, I mean, all the boilers were going, uh, weren't they? All 12 boilers were going, but that wouldn't have been a very high plenum temperature. I'm guessing that was probably about 300, 320 degrees. Uh, and when we go for uh, a full power run, we'll be in uh, superheated steam at about 400 degrees C. It's amazing, there's this massive cloud, it even blocked out the sun at one point. Uh, yes, yes, we, we, we make our own rain. Uh, we, we, it's a very English thing to do, take your own weather with you and, and drink lots of tea. That's why a steam project is, is right <laughs> up our street. A week later, it's back to the airfield. The Thorny Island runway is not long enough to go full pelt but it's enough to prove the three-ton car, so far reliably unreliable, actually works. And bingo, 80 miles an hour may not be enough to break the record, but it's more than enough to give the team hope that after 10 years, it's a step closer. We've got one in the bag. It's all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. Good, yeah, yeah. Can we jump around? Uh, <laughs> get the record next. Yeah, yeah, it uh, makes a good noise, doesn't it? That was sweet, that really was good. Um, the car is just so powerful, you can feel the immense forces and power inside it, and it's itching to get away. It makes a slow getaway, but it was building up speed and we were still accelerating coming up the runway. Fantastic. To see her just go by with that whoosh of steam and the sound, you can hear the turbine, you can see the parachute deploy. We're going to do it, you know, we are going to do it, it's going to go. Next stop, America, and one of the biggest test tracks in the world. Now we're 75 miles north of Los Angeles, and this is basically the Mojave Desert. Rattlesnakes and scorpions lurking nearby, but this is the place where the British team hope to make history this week. Having been vetted by the Pentagon, the team's allowed to set up camp on the dry lake bed at Edwards Air Force Base. First problem, ironically for a car which runs on steam, it's simply too hot out here. Testing's abandoned. It's a record-breaking car. It, it's technology that's uh, new, so we are a test bed, and heat we always knew was going to be a problem, but I don't think we're expecting it to be quite this hot at the moment, and it, and it is unseasonally hot here. 
So how do you stop a car designed for superheat from, well, overheating? While half the team ponders that one, the other half gets to work on the lake bed. Now, as I've only just joined the STEAM team here at their base camp, they've suggested something of an, well, initiation. It involves going out in the middle of the desert in this midday heat. It's well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, they say it's called fodding. They haven't told me anything more about it, but there's definitely a touch of mad dogs and Englishmen about this one. Edwards Ground, this is Test Ops 2. Request permission to enter Lake Bed with two vehicles for fod walk, over. Test Ops 2, proceed on Lake Bed, runway 1533. I keep my eyes wide open all the time because you're mine. I walk the line. Foreign object debris and that's what we're out here to do is collect all the foreign objects and the stones that there's about half a centimeter plus it might you know seem funny coming out sweeping a desert but I can assure you this is really really important to the operation this is the the size uh, we're looking for this is why it's so important and this is why we need teams of fodders like yourself out here fodding. Because you're mine, I walk the line. In 1907, Fred Marriott climbed back into his Stanley steam car to try and break his own record. But this time, while he was going at top speed, the car hit a rut, took off and crashed as it landed. The car was a complete write-off and Marriott was lucky to escape with his life. But that's why this team are taking their fodding duties so seriously. The smallest stone or bump could spell disaster. The car went over, the driver um, unfortunately cracked his skull and his eyeball popped out. But the, uh, the local doctor put it back in again with a spoon and uh, his skull healed and he lived to a grand old age of I think 85 or 86 years old. Back to the overheating car. Don's been sent out with a shopping list. Are you ready for this? Yeah. You ready for this? That could save the whole project. On three. One, two, three. Yep, buckets full of frozen carbon dioxide, otherwise known as dry ice. Every nook and cranny of the car will be filled with the stuff to keep the components cool. And with this ingenious solution in place, the official timekeepers arrive at Edwards. Does this car surprise you? Is this a sort of crazy thing that you haven't come across before? Uh, I like the audacity of it. The we're going to do it no matter what attitude. No matter how crazy it is, we're going to do it. We'll travel halfway around the world and race a steam car in the California desert. I like that spirit of it. At the moment, I've got to bring this up. The record's held by an American team. Mm -hmm. You're helping facilitate a British team maybe take the record. You know, I haven't really given that any thought. And, uh, I shouldn't I, say it now, should I? I don't know if it's because of the affinity that uh, Americans and, and, uh, and British people have. Uh, certainly there's a lot of national pride uh, in, in holding records of any type, but uh, we, want to, we, want, uh, we always want to be pushing the state of the art and technology and pushing ourselves. So uh, in, in that spirit of competition, I think we're happy to support. Testing's over. So while Don helps out behind the scenes, it's time for Charles Burnett III to get behind the wheel for the record attempt. Steam control, car is running. Charles has three miles of accelerating before hitting the time traps, which mark the start of the measured mile. Do you get a feeling before these things? Do you get a hunch whether the car's gonna do it or not? You've been to enough of them. You know, my, I hate to say this, my general hunch is that no one's ever going to do it. Because I've seen an awful lot of people come out and be very quickly humbled by the conditions. It's harder than it really looks. The first run's looking good, but the record depends on the average speed after a second run. Mile speed was 129.762. 129.762. One twenty nine is fast enough, isn't it? They've got to do that on the way back. But... They've, they've got an average on the way back. Car is safe and stopped. Over. It's all too much for Pam, whose husband died suddenly a year ago. Along with the rest of the team, Pam has to watch while the car is turned around for its all important second run. Her husband, Frank Swanston, should have been here. He was the chief engineer on the project. 
for all of us it will be um, a double-edged sword really, the end of um, something that we've been working towards for six years, because that's when he first got involved. That'd be great, it's very exciting and I'd be so pleased when Charles has taken that record. It is his car, isn't it, Frank? You wouldn't be here without him. No, not really, if I'm honest. And I think if you ask most of the guys, I think they'd say the same thing, really. Refueled with compressed air, propane and water, the car sets off, but then grinds to a halt. Control, we didn't get much more. We're 70 miles an hour. We're down to 30 now and uh, coasting, no brakes. Over. Come to uh, a standstill uh, just over halfway down the course uh, and that will be our running for the day, so uh, stand down. Are you going to be okay today? I mean, I know it's... I'll be fine, I'll be fine. I'll probably have a couple of moments, but, you know, that's what it's all about. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people here who'll be emotional when this finally does what it's, you know, been made to do. So, um, I won't be the only one blubbing at the end of the day. So. <laughs> the car's stopped in the middle of Edwards Air Force Base, the runway NASA sometimes uses to land the space shuttle. And despite all that fodding... Uh, well, we seem to have a, a, a puncture, which uh, goes to show that we still need to keep this track nice and clean. There's been lots of vehicle movements going up and down it for the last, well, week or so, and we haven't had a close inspection of the, of the track. So we need to get the tyre off, have a good look at it, and find out exactly what it is, and get a team back out on there to, to walk and pick up whatever is left. This is the start of a week of setbacks for the car. Just too good to be true Can't keep my eyes off you Boilers blow, valves clog up with the desert dust and all the time the clock's ticking on the timekeepers booked for another event in just a few days' time. And to top it all, with each successive run, the car is slowing down. A little slower than yesterday, slowing down particularly at the far end, so he must have uh, had a problem towards the end of the mile. We know that we need uh, more distance, so uh, this course is just over six miles and uh, uh, we'll try and uh, redo the course to uh, seven miles so that we can get the maximum out of the car. Bit of a slow takeoff there, we knew that was coming, but it seemed a little excessively slow, so I think we used a bit too much fuel on the startup. When the car's ready, the track's not, or when the track's ready, the car's not. So we've just got to get that timing just right. But our plucky British chaps take it all in their stride. Rather than pushing the envelope, we're gently steaming the envelope open of a uh, land speed record in the steam world. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. You feel like heaven to touch. <laughs> There's always a little obsessive compulsiveness about, uh, about record breakers. Has to be, because otherwise uh, uh, you go away and do something sensible, wouldn't you? These are my steampunk goggles. It's pretty hard to see here. <laughs> Try them on. Um, yeah, you can't really see much at all, actually, can you? They're all for looks and style. I'm slightly concerned for you if you're wearing these during the attempt, because I don't know if you'll see much of a car. Well, you know what, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Certainly without this team here to get in there and, and, and just get it apart again, put it together again, no hope. In fact, I asked one of the guys, I said, you know, at what point did you say enough's enough, it's time to give up? And he looked at me like I was crazy. He said, you know, give up for British. It's crunch time. In two days, the official timekeepers will have to move on, effectively pulling the plug on the team's record-breaking dreams. They hit the last chance saloon in the local town of Lancaster, with the seriousness of their situation really kicking in. The mechanics are getting tired, 
Um, I'm getting tired, you know, I'm not doing the work that they do, but I'm supporting them wherever I can. It's really up to Charles. And, but every time the car runs and it can't, it runs well, we build up our optimism and, and hope that we're going to get this record. My time is number, baby. Ain't nobody can stay here for very long. The locals are intrigued by their British guests. I'm here by square, the record's only 127 at the moment. And it's the oldest record, um, the oldest land speed record there is. Well, good luck. Hope it works out for you. Thank you very much. Where did you work? I worked work? on the Navy, United States Navy. I worked on the steam turbines on the United States Navy. On, the, oh, on my yeah. ship I worked on, yeah. So I heard you guys using the car, so I was wondering how you guys are making the... Uh, they had such small boilers to make the car roll. 12, like, 12, 12 boilers. 12 boilers. But they're having problems guessing which Brit is mad enough to be the test driver. I would have never guessed it. <laughs> really? I thought it was you right there or you right there. Yeah. Only because he looks crazy enough to do it. <laughs> Next day, dawn on Edwards Air Force Base, and it's a military operation getting the record attempt underway before temperatures rise in the desert. Timing stand. Yeah, Mike, he's about one mile out of the time to trap and looking good. At the far end of the course, all you can do is wait till the car comes into view. Got a really sort of, um, ooh, dare I say it? <laughs> Got a really good feeling. Mm. Bit of a tingle, is it? Oh, possibly. I could be because I need to use the Oh, you can do the film. Coming into the trap right now. Entry speed 128.011 with an exit speed of 136.103. So it was still, it was still accelerating through the mile. That's pretty still good accelerating, speed. yes. It, in fact, it. Uh, picked up about eight miles an hour through the timed area, so it was still accelerating. It's a great start with a top speed over 140 miles per hour. Remember, the old record stands at 127, but it won't mean anything until the car makes its return run. There's one in the bag. Um, we'll see uh, if we can turn it around. Yeah. I can't help noticing it's a bit cooler this morning, 14 degrees as the sun came up. That could only help. Uh, yeah, it all helps. Uh, still conditions, uh, cooler car runs uh, a lot uh, better when it's cooler. So uh, yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's a, good, a good start to the morning. It's not surprising Matt's not counting his chickens. The rules state the car must be turned around and sent off on its second run within just one hour. And time is slipping away. Control to start team. We have just under 20 minutes uh, to run. Control. We had a hold on the pilot lights because the fans weren't working. They are now working. Turn around, engine control. Are they saying they're ready? They're saying they're ready. Should be rolling in a few minutes. Better be rolling in a few minutes. How long left? Nine minutes. Control to turn around, you are clear to run, you are clear to run. Well, this is what it all comes down to. Ten years of design, construction and testing, and now they could be seconds away from making a new steam world record. Speed is 144. 147, looking great. And through the mile, 147. What's it looking like, chaps? Looking really good. We will have to uh, calculate here in just a moment and uh, and come up with an unofficial pending speed uh, average for you, but uh, we'll let you know in just a second. Oh, I can't speak. I can't speak. 
It's uh, fantastic. It's like, fantastic. Moments later, it's confirmed. Charles has set a new record for Britain. How did it feel, Charles, when you were up to, what, 147? 147 miles an hour was, was, it was unbelievable. That was the fastest I've ever been. So we got 139. 84.3 in the mile and 140, just cracked 140 in the kilo. That is official there. Official 140.149, official. New world official record in steam. The achievement ends a 10 year roller coaster ride for a team for whom a car came to mean more than just breaking a record. While this project goes on, it's kept him alive for everybody. Um, not just for me, not for, for my family. But I think it will bring closure, hopefully. Very emotional today. Yep. Especially for Pam. Frank and Charles, they put so much into it. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, it's sand in my eyes. <coughs> there's been tears everywhere. Up and down the lake bed there's been tears. Um, it's been hard, hard work. And uh, we, we have succeeded at long last. But it's not over yet for the team or for Don Wales. In a magnanimous gesture, Charles offers Don the chance to beat the record he's just set. Finally, this is Don's moment. If he's going to enter the record books in this car, he needs to beat Charles' 139 miles an hour. Did you, did you clean the windshield? Before taking the driving seat, Don Wales follows family tradition by placing Sir Malcolm Campbell's Bluebird St Christopher in the steam car. In all previous attempts, the car's internal computer was set to shut everything down if the boilers went too far into superheat. Good start! Very good start! This time, it's no holds barred. Coming into the mile right now. The limiters are off and Don can go all out, even if it breaks the car. Exit speed of 149 miles an hour. Wow! Wow! Yeah! It's totally due to the fact that Don is 50 pounds lighter than I am. I'm sorry, but that's... Because <laughs> his foot's not any heavier than mine, I can promise you. And the second pass is even better. The steam car reaches almost 160 miles per hour. Yay! A jubilant Don Wales chases his ancestors into the record books. Very proud to be British, very proud and to be associated with this team who have worked, very, very hard working team. They deserve every success that they've got today. While everyone jumps for joy, the ever-reserved project manager, Matt, ponders his future. I'm unemployed. Is any, if, uh, if, if anyone wants to find my CV, if you've got a project that doesn't need to run smoothly, uh, you know where to find me. Yeah, right. The fastest steam car in the world is now back home and heading for the National Motor Museum in Hampshire, having earned its place in land speed history. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my